An angry elephant tries to flip a bus filled with tourists in South Africa. The driver then attempts to reverse away from the animal after the vehicle lands on the ground. More details on this later in the news. Good evening, I am Gianna Llanes. I am Nina Richie Alago Flores. This is Matanang Aguila International. Now for the headlines. Chinese Ambassador to the Philippines oh, Wang Chilian warns of a possible backfire on Manila's economy if trifling with Beijing persists. The Department of Health urges the public to meet their vaccination routines as measles and pertussis cases rise nationwide. Vietnam's Communist Party confirms its president's resignation while Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar steps down from his post. A magnitude 5.2 earthquake shakes Kasukabe, Japan. And let's play a game of chess with Neuralink's first recipient. Washington, D.C. London Bureau of Papua New Guinea. In New York, New York. Washington, D.C. Pumatanang Aguila. Pumatanang Aguila. Pumatanang Aguila. Pumatanang Aguila. Pumatanang Aguila International. Trusted. Connected. On point. Chinese ambassador to the Philippines Wang Chilian has called out Manila for trifling on Beijing's warnings, claiming it would backfire on the country's economy. China's development cannot be separated from the world's world. The development of the world cannot happen without China. Talking down on China will only backfire, and misjudging China will only squander opportunities. According to Wang, there have been many foreign companies and corporations invested and continue to invest in China this year. The Chinese diplomat highlighted that China remained the Philippines' largest trading partner for eight straight years. China-Philippine trade continues to rise in defiance of the trend, reaching a total of 40 billion U.S. dollars, a year-on-year -year increase of 2.7%. Wang, however, refused to give an interview with journalists regarding the issues between China and the Philippines, particularly in the West Philippine Sea. Instead, Wang stressed that consultations have been an important thing to settle the problems of the two countries. As China and the Philippines are linked by a strip of water, it is normal for neighboring countries to have differences and disputes, but it is imperative that we address them through a constructive dialogue and friendly consultation instead of any provocation or disinformation. The Philippines started its marine research in Sandy Cay over the West Philippine Sea. Sandy Cay is a shoal located some 2.5 nautical miles off Pagasa Island in the West Philippine Sea. The three research groups are the UP Institute of Biology, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, and the Department of Agriculture, National Fisheries Research and Development Institute. As the first marine research in Sandy Cay, the scientists said the main goal of this study is to show that these offshore reefs belong to the Philippines, as well as create awareness about these reefs. Philippine Coast Guard or PCG spokesperson for WPS Commodore Jay Tagiela said the scientists will make an assessment on Sandy K 1, 2, 3, and 4. The research wants to find out the kinds of corals, fishes, and invertebrates that live in the WPS feature. The scientists will also record Sandy K's biodiversity to help ensure food security. The initial findings on Sandy K1 and 2, according to Targiela, may be presented Friday morning or afternoon after the meeting of the three research groups this Thursday evening. Commodore Targiela said the BFAR and PCG deployed four vessels in the area in anticipation of the possibility that Chinese vessels will block the Philippines' research activities in Sandy K. In September 2023, dead and crushed corals were found in Sandy K2. Experts said this was a common procedure done by China before it starts reclamation activities. 
Vice President and Department of Education Secretary Sara Duterte led the inauguration of the Philippine International School in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. This is the first Philippine school overseas in the Mekong region, marking it as a debit accredited school, meaning it can use the Philippine curriculum in its program. Vice President Duterte also also led or met with the president of the Southeast Asia Minister of Education Organization, or CIMEO. As part of her duty, she met her counterpart, Cambodian Deputy Prime Minister and Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports, Dr. Hang Chuan Naron, to discuss how the organization can help Phnom Penh. Vice President Duterte also participated in a book reading session and tree planning activity and met with Filipino community leaders in Cambodia. The Department of Health urges the public to get vaccinated as cases of measles, rubella and pertussis rise nationwide. The DOH has endorsed that free measles, mumps and rubella or MMR and tetanus, diphtheria and pertussis or Tdep vaccines are available in local health centers. The World Health Organization has raised alarm on the rapid spread of measles and rubella with 569 cases recorded in the Philippines as of last month. Measles is a highly contagious disease with symptoms like high fever and body rashes, while rubella, also known as German measles, is also a contagious disease caused by a different virus, both of which can be prevented by the MMR vaccine. Unvaccinated children under five are among the most affected by measles, and both diseases can be easily spread through coughing and sneezing. The DOH aims to increase the immunization rate against measles and rubella from 69% in 2022 to at least 90% of the high-risk population, with particular focus on children aged 6 months to 10 years. Meanwhile, the DOH has reported a total of 453 cases of pertussis in the first 10 weeks of 2024, with Quezon City already declaring an outbreak in the area. Four infants already died of the infection and 23 other cases were reported as of the previous week. According to CDC, pertussis is a contagious disease in lungs caused by abortitella pertussis with mild fever, cough and runny nose as symptoms. While treatable with antibiotics, prevention through vaccines like Tdap is highly recommended by the DOH. The Department of Budget and Management, or DBM, has greenlit an allocation of almost 1.3 billion pesos for the Department of Education aimed at delivering electricity to public schools, lacking power and upgrading electrical infrastructure nationwide. Budget Secretary Amena Pangandaman underscored the significance of this budget, highlighting its potential to foster a conducive or conducive learning environment for students throughout the archipelago. She stressed the importance of these funds in enhancing the comfort and well-being of both students and teachers within their classroom settings. Secretary Pangandaman said, Let us collectively work toward a brighter future for our beloved Philippines under the visionary leadership of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The Department of Foreign Affairs has expressed its anticipation for the revival of a comprehensive, balanced and modern Philippines-European Union free trade agreement. This development follows President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s official visits to Germany and the Czech Republic, during which he solicited support from both nations to reignite negotiations on the free trade agreement. President Marcos underscored the agreement's significance in fostering shared prosperity, stable economic growth, and sustainable development for the Philippines. Meanwhile, the EU has detailed an expansive trade partnership with the Philippines, particularly in energy and raw materials such as nickel, copper, and chromite. These resources are crucial for the production of green technologies, aligning with the EU's sustainability objectives. The Civil Service Commission has announced a deadline for filing the 2023 Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth, or SALIN, on April 30, 2024. 
The agency noted in compliance with 2017 rules on administrative cases in the civil service, government employees' failure to comply with a deadline will result in a maximum six-month suspension on the first offense and dismissal from service by the second offense. They would also face criminal charges of perjury and violate the code of conduct for public officials. Missed declaration of Salen would also result in ill-gotten or unexplained wealth. Meanwhile, government employees serving under honorary capacity, laborers, casual and temporary workers hired for external operation of a government agency have been exempted from filing their salin. NEDA Secretary Arsenio Balisacan and his team found themselves unexpectedly stranded inside an elevator for over an hour in a building located in Mandaluyong. The incident occurred as they were making their way to the signing ceremony for the IRR of the PPP code. They were able to make it out after a rescue team opened the elevator door for an emergency exit. Despite the inconvenience and the delay it caused, Balisacan expressed profound gratitude that everyone emerged unharmed from the ordeal. Coming up, Vietnam's president resigns. Blinken unveils a draft U.S. resolution for an immediate ceasefire. And Ireland's Prime Minister steps down. Stay tuned for more stories around the globe when we return. Portion is brought to you by 318 Automart. Can you massage me? Sabay -sabay natin panoorin ang mga nakaka na reaction ng mga kauno natin dito sa Oh No! It's B.O. Biro Oh No! It's B.O. This portion is brought to you by North Luzon Express Terminal. Welcome back to Matanang Agra International. The Vietnamese Communist Party has confirmed that President Bo Van Thuong stepped down from his post. The Vietnamese government claimed that Tuong had violated party rules that would hurt public opinion and the party's reputation. Hanoi, however, did not elaborate on Tuong's shortcomings. Political analysts said that the major leadership changes in the state have been linked to an anti-bribery campaign. Tuong's resignation came after Vietnamese police said they have arrested a former head of Quang Ngai who served while Tuong was party chief there. Vice President Bo Thi and Xuan will serve as the nation's acting president once the National Assembly chooses Hanoi's leader. Thailand's National Police Chief and one of his deputies were temporarily suspended under the order of Prime Minister Sreta Tavisin. 
Dorsak Sukvimol, who was appointed to the top police post, and one of his deputy chiefs, Asurka Chate Hakparn, were temporarily moved to an active post in the office of the Prime Minister, which directly supervises the police department. The top officials were held as accusations of involvement in an illegal online gambling ring surfaced, sparking concerns about the possibility of a potential power struggle within the police department. Sugachate has been accused of involvement with illegal online gambling websites, a charge he denies. Sugachate's home in Bangkok was raided in September last year in an operation police relate to the bust of a major illegal online gambling network. Eight of Sugachate's subordinates were arrested on the day of the raid over the case. The raid occurred as a new national police chief was set to be named and Sugachate was considered one of the frontrunners. Dorksak was appointed to the post days after. Thailand's National Police Agency has a tradition of fierce internal politicking, as well as a long-standing reputation for corruption at all levels. At least 69 Rohingya refugees have been rescued following a tragic incident where a wooden boat carrying around 150 individuals capsized off the coast of Indonesia. Authorities disclosed that among those rescued were 42 men, 18 women and 9 children who were safely brought ashore. The boat is believed to have encountered rough seas off the west coast of Indonesia's Asia province, likely due to adverse weather conditions on Wednesday morning. While the UN Refugee Agency has yet to confirm the number of casualties, information provided by the rescued survivors indicates that the remaining missing refugees may have already drowned. U.S. President Joe Biden wins the endorsement of the United Steelworkers, or USW Union. This, less than a week after saying he opposed the proposed sale of U.S. Steel to Japan's Nippon Steel. Arlino Campo has the details. We will get back to that report by Arlino Campo. Meanwhile, a top U.S. official says Washington could not predict when a vital $60 billion military aid package for Ukraine would be passed in Congress. This as President Volodymyr Zelensky calls for Western air defenses after a Russian missile attack killed at least five. And marie Gonzalez has more. Addressing the stalled aid bill while on a visit to Kiev on Wednesday, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says he cannot say for certain exactly when it will be done. The timing has already taken too long, and I know that, you know that. Uh, I'm not going to make predictions about exactly when this will get done, but we are working to get it done as soon as possible, and President Biden is working this on a daily basis to try to deliver this package through the House. But um, I cannot make a specific prediction today. Sullivan says President Joe Biden is fighting for, every day, the $60 billion that the Senate has passed on a bipartisan basis. Now, he says, they are working with the House to pass. Sullivan says they are confident this aid will get to Ukraine. Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives have been blocking a sweeping aid package since last year. Every day, the funding day has been caught up in domestic Senate arguments over Biden's immigration policies. Meanwhile, so President so Volodymyr Zelensky says the West has vital air defense systems that could save Ukrainian lives if delivered to his country. And marie Gonzalez from Matanang Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. Talks to form a transitional council to govern Haiti advance as the U.S. airlifts more citizens to safety from gang violence that has plunged the impoverished country into chaos. Chantel Santos reports. Guyana's ambassador to the United Nations, Carolyn Rodriguez Burkett, says discussions continue, although it will take a little bit of time. From all indications, however, Rodriguez Burkett says the talks are moving along. A Haitian government source says that names for the council had yet to be provided to outgoing Prime Minister Henri. 
This as the talks among political parties and others drag on. Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, has been overrun by armed groups for weeks. Police stations, power stations, public buildings and facilities have been attacked. Dead bodies are left strewn in the street. Intense clashes and shooting erupted Tuesday and Wednesday in the Pechonville suburb of the capital. Residents say locals are barricading roads to protect themselves and stop gang access. Haiti has been rocked by a surge of unrest since February when armed groups raided a prison and released thousands of inmates. The armed groups demand that Prime Minister Ariel Henry resign. Last week, Henry agreed to step down and allow the formation of an interim government. Negotiations have been slow despite pressure from neighboring Caribbean countries and the U.S. President Jovenel Moise was assassinated in 2021. He was never replaced. Moise was the one who appointed Henri as Prime Minister. Chateau Santos from Matana Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. Still in Haiti, the United States is chartering helicopters to evacuate American citizens from Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. The evacuees are being flown to Santo Domingo in neighboring Dominican Republic. Philip Toledo reports. The U.S. flies citizens out of Haiti's violence-ravaged capital, Port-au-Prince. More evacuations are expected as the crisis there persists. Chartering a helicopter, the U.S. flies some 15 citizens from Port-au-Prince to the neighboring Dominican Republic. The Haitian capital has now been largely overtaken by armed gangs. State Department Principal Deputy Spokesperson Vendant Patel says the U.S. expects more than one trip to get as many American citizens out of Haiti as possible. We do expect um, these um, helicopter movements to uh, make multiple trips um, in order to try and get um, a, a, as many American citizens as, as we can today, uh, while also continuing to look at what options might be available uh, and how what options might be available for reoccurring movements um, in the days ahead and, and even beyond. Another State Department official says at least 30 citizens are expected to come out each day on the helicopter flights. The flights will continue contingent on security and demand. Patel says U.S. government personnel will offer consular assistance in the Dominican Republic's capital, Santo Domingo. From there, Americans will need to arrange their own travel back to the United States. The U.S. carried out the first such operation on Sunday when it flew another 30 citizens to Florida on a chartered plane from the northern city of Capetian. The State Department said it was evaluating whether to arrange more flights out of Capetian. Much of Haiti has descended in recent weeks into virtual anarchy after years of intersecting political, security, and health crises. Haiti is the Western Hemisphere's poorest country. Philip Toledo for Matanong Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. The Brazilian government found dozens of furniture that was reported missing from the presidential palace when current Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva took office. Lula accused former President Jair Bolsonaro for taking one, 261 pieces of furniture with him last January, after which Lula spent $40,000 of public funds to refurbishing the place. However, all the furniture has been found in an undisclosed location in the site. In a statement, Bolsonaro should answer for his false report of the crime. In another statement, former First Lady Michelle Bolsonaro said that the accusation of theft is a smokescreen to justify spending thousands of public funds in luxury furniture items. In 2022, Lula beat Bolsonaro in a closely fought election, which prompted thousands of Bolsonaro supporters to storm the government district and ransack buildings, including the presidential palace. Lula's supporters believe that the riots were an attempted coup, but the former president refuted that the coup allegations against him were all lies. In another statement, Bolsonaro claims that he has been a victim of political persecution since leaving office. The former president is barred from running for office for eight years for undermining the electoral system in Brazil and fraudulent allegations, despite the lack of evidence backing up the accusations. Canada has announced its decision to cease future arms sales to Israel following a non-binding or non-binding vote in the House of Commons. 
Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie confirmed this move after a parliamentary motion proposed by the new Democratic Party or NDP called on the governing Liberals to suspend future arms exports to Israel. The NDP, allies of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's minority government, voiced dissatisfaction with what they perceive as Trudeau's inadequate efforts to protect civilians in Gaza. While the motion calls for the cessation of arms sales to Israel, it also urges Canada to actively pursue the establishment of the state of Palestine. Previously, Canada had stated that while it had temporarily halted the issuance of military export permits to Israel, it continued to evaluate applications on a case-by-case -case basis. An analysis from the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC, warns that Gaza's situation is catastrophic. The Palestinian territory's north faces imminent famine, with the rest of the Gaza Strip also at risk. Rosel Ferrier reports. In a stark warning, the World Health Organization says without a significant immediate increase in deliveries of food, water, and other essential supplies, conditions in northern Gaza will continue deteriorating. The health agency says that all households in the Palestinian territories, northern governorates are forced to skip meals every day. Adults are reducing what they eat so that children can have their share. An analysis from IPC warns that the current situation in northern Gaza will have long-term effects on the lives and health of thousands. Children are dying from the combined effects of malnutrition and disease. WHO says long-term effects of malnutrition, low consumption of nutrient-rich foods, repeated infection and lack of hygiene and sanitation services slow children's overall growth. This endangers the health and well-being of an entire future generation. WHO Chief Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus says that before this crisis, there was enough food in Gaza to feed the population. Malnutrition, he adds, was a rare occurrence. Now, people are dying and many more are sick. Dr. Tedros warns that over a million people are expected to face catastrophic hunger unless significantly more food is allowed to enter Gaza. In order to stop famine, the IPC recommends restoration of humanitarian access to the Gaza Strip halting the fast-paced deterioration of the food security, health and nutrition situation leading to excess mortality, and resuming and sustaining supply of sufficient aid commodities. In Washington, D.C., Roselle Feria for Matanang Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will travel to Israel this week as part of his urgent mission to the Middle East, calling for a ceasefire, pushing forth a resolution made by the United States for the first time. Well, in fact, we actually have a resolution that we put forward right now that's before the United Nations Security Council that does call for an immediate ceasefire tied to the release of hostages. And we uh, hope very much that countries will, uh, will support that. I think that would send a, a strong message, a strong signal. The U.S. had blocked previous Security Council texts using the word immediate, but Blinken confirmed the shift in position in an interview. This will be a sixth visit since Israel's war with, his, or with Hamas began as relations between the two countries have soured dramatically in recent weeks. The State Department said the Israel stop would cap Lincoln's latest Mideast tour that started in Saudi Arabia and will continue in Egypt. The top U.S. diplomat will be in Tel Aviv after talks with Arab leaders and foreign ministers in Jeddah and Cairo focused on the war in Gaza. The visit comes amid a flurry of calls, planned trips by U.S. and Israeli officials and public airings of severe disagreements over the state of the conflict. Of course, we... We stand with Israel in its right to defend itself, to make sure that October 7th never happens again. But at the same time, it's imperative that the civilians who are in harm's way and who are suffering so terribly, that we focus on them, that we make them a priority, protecting the civilians, getting them humanitarian assistance. 
A particular point of contention being that Israeli plans to mount a major military operation in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. The United States has circulated a draft UN resolution for the first time calling for an immediate ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war as warnings grow a famine in besieged Gaza. It's getting closer. I think uh, the, the gaps are, are narrowing and I think an agreement is very much possible. We worked very hard with Qatar, with Egypt, uh, and with Israel to put a strong proposal on the table. We did that. Hamas wouldn't accept it. They came back with uh, other uh, requests, other, other demands. The negotiators are working on that right now. Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar has announced his resignation. So I am resigning as president and leader of Fine Gael effective today and will resign as Taoiseach as soon as my successor is able to take up that office. I've asked our Party General Secretary and Executive Council to provide for the new leader to be elected in advance of the Ardesh on Saturday, April 16th, thus allowing a new Taoiseach to be elected when the Dáil resumes after the Easter break. Farad Khan has been known to be Ireland's youngest prime minister when he became the leader of Fine Gael at 38 years old in 2017. Farad Khan, who has been emotional during his announcement, disclosed that he was stepping down from his post for both personal and political reasons. Meanwhile, a Fine Gael Nation executive emergency meeting is scheduled to start the process of selecting a new leader. Deputy Leader of Fine Gael Enterprise, Trade and Employment Minister Simon Coveney disclosed that there have been four names indicated to be elected as the new Prime Minister. Von Getting has made history as being elected as the first Black First Minister of Wales, marking a significant milestone in European politics. We have, of course, today voted also <laughs> to ensure that Wales becomes the first nation anywhere in Europe to be led by a black person. It is a matter of pride, I believe, for a modern Wales, but also a daunting responsibility for me, and one that I do not take lightly. Following his victory in the leadership contest for Wales' governing Labour Party, Gething secured the position of First Minister through securing 27 of the 51 votes in the Welsh Parliament in Cardiff. His appointment as First Minister awaits approval from King Charles III, a customary formality in the United Kingdom, after which he will be sworn in to assume his new responsibilities. I believe the Wales of today and the future will be owned by all those decent people who recognise that our Parliament and our Government should look like our country. People who recognise that our hope and ambition for the future relies on unleashing the talent of all of us. A Wales that recognises that we can celebrate our differences and take pride in all those things that draw us together and make us who we are. That is the Wales that I want to lead. A Wales full of hope, ambition and unity. Media reports have circulated claiming the United States Justice Department is considering allowing WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange to plead guilty to a reduced charge. Assange is battling extradition from the Britain or from Britain to the United States where he faces 18 espionage charges for allegedly mishandling classified information. A spokesperson for the Justice Department declined to comment on the report, but lawyers for Assange say there is no indication of a resolution to Washington's charges against their client. Attorney Barry Pollack also refused to comment further, saying it is inappropriate for them to respond while the case is pending before the UK high court. But Pollock believes that the United States is determined to seek Assange's extradition on all 18 charges, exposing their client to 175 years in prison. Several advocacy groups, leading media organizations and leaders of countries like Mexico, Brazil and Australia have urged the charges against Assange to be dropped. But the United States asserts the release of the military records and diplomatic cables in 2010 had put many lives in danger. U.S. President Joe Biden wins the endorsement of the United Steelworkers, or USW Union. This less than a week after saying he opposed the proposed sale of U.S. Steel to Japan's Nippon Steel. Arlene Ocampo has the details. 
the planned $14.1 billion acquisition has become a hot political issue ahead of November's presidential election. The union and lawmakers from both parties have spoken out against the sale of an American manufacturing icon to a foreign owner. USW International President David McCall says Biden has proven time and again during his first term that he stands with working families. Biden has relentlessly courted the union vote as he competes with Republican opponent Donald Trump for working class voters' support. As the election nears, workers from key industries and swing states could shift the balance towards either party. Swing states include Pennsylvania and Michigan. Biden's campaign welcomes the union's backing. Biden campaign manager Julie Chavez Rodriguez says the president is honored to earn the support of the United Steelworkers and its 850,000 workers. Chavez Rodriguez adds that the president knows that with their support comes the responsibility to fight every single day for USW and workers everywhere. Arlene Ocampo from Atanang Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. A Montenegro appeals court confirmed that crypto mogul Do Kwon will be extradited to South Korea, his native country. The United States also requested Do Kwon's extradition from Montenegro. Kwon founded the Terra Money crypto platform. He was charged in the United States with fraud by federal prosecutors in New York. Later on, the appeals court ruled in favor of South Korea. It is not immediately clear when the extradition to Seoul will take place. But sources said the cryptocurrency king Kwan has no further avenues for appeal. Mercedes-Benz is recalling more than 116,000 vehicles over fire risks. The German automaker says the 48-volt ground connection located under the passenger seat may have come loose during the assembly process. If a connection is loose, it is possible that when a high electrical current passes through, it could increase the risk of a fire. To correct the issue, Mercedes-Benz will inspect recalled vehicles and repair the connection if necessary. Owners of vehicles impacted by the recall will be notified via letter starting on May 14. <coughs> Up next, a strong earthquake rocked Japan's Kanto region. The U.S. Environmental Protection Authority aims to cut down on emissions. And a Neuralink user plays chess with his mind. Don't go away, we've got more stories when Matanang Agil International returns. This portion is brought to you by Robic Builders.
A strong magnitude 5.2 earthquake hit Kasukabe, Japan, and was felt over eastern Honshu. Japanese seismologists reported the earthquake's epicenter has been located around 16 kilometers northeast Kasukabe. Local agencies said they have received around 216 reports about the quake. 212 among these indicated they felt it. Meanwhile, emergency authorities said no aftershocks have been recorded so far. In South Africa, a rampaging bull elephant tried to flip a bus filled with tourists using its tusks. Video footage circulating online showed tourists at Pilanesburg National Park crying out loud as the elephant lifted the vehicle. The 11-foot elephant then slammed the bus twice. After returning to the ground, the driver attempted to reverse out from the agitated tusker. The animal, however, tried to serve for a third round, but the driver stopped it from doing so. Local media reported no one aboard the vehicle had been injured. According to animal experts, angry elephants show body language like widened eyes as well as spreading their ears when approaching a perceived threat. French civil servants took to the streets in Paris protesting wages. The country's powerful civil service unions called for the strike to back demands for higher pay. Marjorie Quintos reports. We will return to the report of Marjorie Quintos. In other news, Cubans experience long outages that have left some areas without power for up to 14 hours a day in March. This sparks rare protests in the country's second largest city, Santiago de Cuba. Elise Daniel tells us more. Cuban stage rare street protests over food and electricity shortages. This as the island suffers long outages that leave some areas without power for up to 14 hours a day. Protesters in Santiago de Cuba shout food and electricity. Late Sunday, electricity was restored to the city and two truckloads of rice were reportedly delivered. Social media platforms were filled with images of protests in Santiago de Cuba, a city of 510,000 people. There were also images of protests in another large city, Bayamo. Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel responds to Sunday's protests. He urges dialogue with the people in an atmosphere of tranquility. Elise Daniel for Matana Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. An American citizen has been sentenced to 16 years and 8 months in prison for killing his mother. A U.S. Department of Defense civilian employee stationed at a naval base in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Jeff Sanidad tells us more. Court documents reveal that on January 31st, 2021, 30-year-old Giovanni Z. Pope killed his mother in the apartment they shared in Bahrain. Pope stabbed her to death with a knife. At that time, Pope's mother was employed as a U.S. Department of the Navy civilian employee. She was assigned to Naval Support Activity Bahrain. Pope was living with her as a dependent. After fatally stabbing his mother, Pope cleaned her body and removed evidence of the murder from the apartment. He then left in his mother's car. Pope was apprehended by Bahraini authorities and later on sent back to the U.S. pursuant to the Military Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Act. Pope was charged in Maryland with one count of murder. Pope pleaded guilty on November 3, 2023 to second-degree murder. The FBI and NCIS investigated the case. In Washington, D.C., Jeff Sanidad for Matanang Aguila International. Trusted, connected, on point. In a 6-2-3 historic decision, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that Texas State's Border Protection Law, or Senate Bill No. 4, may be enforced. This is while a lawsuit against it is pending adjudication. The said Texas law would give police broad powers to arrest people suspected of illegally entering the United States. Authorities can put them in jail or send them back to where they came from. 
Opponents of the SB4 often argue that it would be unconstitutional if SB4 were to take effect, insisting that it would be among the toughest immigration or immigration measures in any U.S. state. But some Republicans assert that SB4 is necessary to reduce migrant crossings and that the Biden administration has not done enough to secure the border. Records show that at least 6.3 million migrants have been held crossing illegally into the United States since President Joe Biden took office in 2021. The United Nations warns that 2024 is likely to be even hotter than the previous year. This as global temperatures smash heat records in 2023. Berlroga Shon has more. The annual State of the Climate Report by the United Nations Weather and Climate Agency confirms preliminary data showing 2023 was by far the hottest year ever recorded. World Meteorological Organization, or WMO, Climate Monitoring Chief Omar Badur says even hotter temperatures are expected this year. Badur says there is a high probability that 2024 will again break the record of 2023. Reacting to the report, UN Chief Antonio Guterres says the planet is on the brink. Earth is issuing a distress call. The latest state of the global climate report shows a planet on the brink. Fossil fuel pollution is sending climate chaos off the charts. Sirens are blurring across all major indicators. Last year saw record heat, record sea levels and record ocean surface temperatures. Glaciers likely lost more ice than ever before. Some records are just chart topping, they are chart busting, and changes are speeding up. The WMO says the average near surface temperature last year was 1.45 degrees Celsius above pre industrial levels. This was dangerously close to the critical 1.5 degree threshold that countries agreed to avoid passing in the 2015 Paris Climate Accords. WMO Secretary General Celeste Saulo is sounding the alarm. Celeste says although the cost of climate action may seem high, the cost of climate inaction is much higher. The scientific knowledge about climate change has existed for more than five decades, and yet we missed an entire generation of opportunity. It is imperative that our actions today are based on the welfare of future generations rather than short-term economic interests. As Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, I am now sounding the red alert. Pearl Rogachon for Mata ng Aguila International. Trusted, connected, on point. French civil servants took to the streets in Paris protesting wages. The country's powerful civil service unions called for the strike to back demands for higher pay. Marjorie Quintos reports. Thousands of workers across France joined the protest Tuesday. Union leaders say wages are not keeping up with inflation and working conditions are deteriorating. The latest government figures peg inflation at 3.1%. The unions say workers' purchasing power has been reduced. As well as wages, the unions say cuts to public spending are leading to poor working conditions. Up to 100 demonstrations have been planned nationwide, with hospitals and schools feeling the impact the most. One in five French workers is employed in the public sector. They teach, provide health care, and work in dozens of government agencies. Marjorie Quintos from Matanang Aguila International. Trusted, connected, on point. Elon Musk's brain chip venture Neuralink has achieved a groundbreaking milestone by demonstrating its first patient using an implanted device to control a computer cursor. 
Nolan Arbo, who was paralyzed below the shoulders due to a diving accident, received the chip implant in January. In a nine-minute live stream by Neuralink, he showcased his ability to manipulate the cursor, even engaging in online chess, effectively illustrating the company's objective of bridging the gap between human or the human brain and computers. Arbo further shared his experience of using the brain implant to play the video game Civilization VI continuously for eight hours. Neuralink obtained approval from the Food and Drug Administration in May 2023 to conduct human trials with a chip following successful trials that included a monkey capable of playing a rudimentary version of Pong using the implant. Coming right up, should the UK probe a breach into Princess Kate's affairs? An ex-K-pop star leaves jail after a lengthy prison sentence. And the quiet on-set documentary has Hollywood stars divided. Catch the latest in sports and entertainment. Matanang Aguila International will be back. Expose, mga epira claimants mula sa Davao, sumisigaw ng ustisya ang ilan sa kanila lumutang sa responde. Yung dapat para sa amin, ibigay na kasi nangihirat na kami. Viral ngayon, buta sa sidewalk sa Malaria Road, inreklamo. Baka mas marami pa pong uh, naaksidente o maaksidente. Exclusive! Tatlong araw na selebrasyon ng 7th anniversary ng Embrace, bumuhos ang responde para sa mga kababayan nating PWD. Kapado, alas 6 hanggang alas 7 ng gabi, ito ang responde. Mata ng pamamayan. Let's live together, Sunet 25, Sunet 25. Logging is a practice where an individual picks up garbage while on the run. And Chilean lawyer Gonzalo Chiang and his dog Sam are the environmental pioneers in Chile of plugging, a practice invented in Sweden in 2016. Plugging is a word combination of jogging and the Swedish term plocka, which means to pick. It is a practice where an individual picks up garbage while on the run. It was included as a noun in the Collins Dictionary in 2018. Attorney Chiang and Sam the Border Collie have been plugging, running and collecting rubbish together for two years in Santiago one of Chile's largest parks. Attorney Chiang included his dog Sam in his advocacy to raise environmental awareness. Bueno, para mí el plugging es una respuesta natural en torno a dos inquietudes importantes en mi vida. Una es el tema medioambiental y la otra es la salud, el autocuidado, que confluyen en algo que para mí es entretenido además y en algo que también es una responsabilidad que es el cuidado y la tenencia responsable del SAM. Bueno, la idea de incluir a, al SAM en esta propuesta de, de tratar de generar conciencia y hacer una invitación en torno a, a, a cambiar nuestro, nuestros hábitos diarios y es una parte importante porque la invitación está construida desde lo habitual y de, desde el día a día y no hay nada más habitual que el paseo diario del perro. The British police have been asked to look at claims that at least one worker attempted to access the confidential medical records of Princess Kate. 
The princess was hospitalized early this year at the London Clinic for abdominal surgery. Details of her two-week stay at the hospital or her condition were not released. But Kensington Palace Office previously confirmed it was not cancer-related. The palace also said that Princess Kate wished her personal medical information to remain private. Meanwhile, London's Metropolitan Police said it was not aware of any referral at this time. But the UK's data protection watchdog said it would examine the matter. It also confirmed media stories that it received an attempted breach report of Princess Kate's medical notes. Completing the grueling Los Angeles Marathon is a tall order all on its own. Now imagine running the 26.2 mile race dressed as a penguin or a teddy bear. Continuing with stories from this recent event, Alan Basaliaje catches up with some of these life-size costume competitors. In every marathon, it's not uncommon to see runners in uniform or in costume. But how does choice of fashion play out when running 26 miles? Ketone IQ, we work with a bunch of pro athletes, Olympians, Ironman athletes, pro athletes, and I'm a amateur marathoner. A lot of times I just run in my regular marathon clothes, but today I wanted to celebrate, give a little, a little shout out to the product and the team. I have an awesome team behind me. So I decided to wear the full blow up today for the full marathon. The vibes out here are just incredible. Los Angeles, incredible city, city of hopes and dreams. So just a lot of love out there and a lot of support. And I think a lot of people appreciate just all the runners and you know, I'm out here building my company, living the American dream. And I think a lot of people were just really supporting that. Logan Paul uh, sent me a message asking me if I I would uh, run the, the marathon in this suit. And so uh, here I am wearing this suit in the marathons. It's pretty heavy and it doesn't breathe real well. And uh, my arms are kind of going numb and this bottle cap kept hitting me in the head. So uh, it was challenging, um, but yesterday I ran 62 miles. So this was kind of like a cool down. That's actually my wife's idea. Uh, she decided to buy uh, costumes of penguin. We ordered it like a couple months ago and she's actually running right now. It's actually hot in it, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of cheering, yeah. I mean, compared to any other previous races, just like people cheer regular thing or maybe the best my name, but when I'm wearing penguin, like every, like, I don't know, a hundred times a mile. <laughs> this thing is heavy. And then the, the oxygen, I don't get as much. That's the biggest challenge is trying to go fast in this. Other than that, I mean, I finished, right? 26.2 miles. <laughs> People just don't know what they're capable of. So uh, you gotta try it. Just go out for a walk. That's how I started wearing this. I couldn't run in this. I just literally walked in it before I started running. So take your time. Don't feel rushed. Don't let no one pressure you. If you want to go run, go for a run and enjoy it. Running alongside someone in a costume can remind marathoners to stay hydrated or that there's no more cheese in the refrigerator. Reporting from Century City, California, Alan Basuyahe for Matanang Agala International. Trusted, connected, on point. Former K-pop star Jung Jun Young left Mokpo prison Tuesday after completing a five-year term for gang rape and illicit filming. Jung walked out of prison without talking to reporters. The court found Jung guilty of rape on two occasions in 2016 and of filming himself having intercourse with other women without their knowledge. Spy cam videos are known as molkai in Korean. It is commonly made by men who secretly film women in schools, toilets, and elsewhere. Jung's case was one of a series of high-profile sex scandals involving male celebrities that emerged at the height of a local hashtag MeToo movement. Jung rose to fame in 2012 and had several solo hits before the spy cam scandal emerged in early 2019. Since then, he announced his retirement from the entertainment business. Ex-Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider responded to accusations of abusive and inappropriate behavior made against him in the docuseries Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of TV. 
featured in a video with actor Boogie, the Drake and Josh creator expressed how it was difficult for him to watch all four episodes of the Investigation Discovery special. In the video, Schneider said, I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology while reflecting on his past behaviors that he claimed to regret and be embarrassed about. However, Zoe 101 actor Alexa Nichols, who has been a vocal critic of Schneider, slammed the former producer's comments, saying that she does not feel any remorse for him. Even before Quiet On Set, Schneider has been criticized for including sexually suggestive jokes in the shows he, or in the shows he makes that are supposed to cater to children. The 58-year-old was also accused of mistreating two female first-time writers by making them split up a single star writer's salary, which he denied that he has anything to do with determining the paychecks for writers. Schneider also denied that he was responsible for the hiring of Brian Peck, a dialogue coach sentenced to 16 months in prison after pleading a no contest to two counts of child sex abuse in 2004. In a statement, a Nickelodeon a spokesperson said that the channel cannot corroborate or negate allegations from production ages ago, highlighting that their highest priorities are the well-being and best interests not just for their employees, cast and crew, but for all children. And to send you off this Thursday, here's a quote from Norwegian singer or singer-songwriter Aurora Axnes. If you try to protect yourself from pain, it becomes a stone in your heart. But the more you learn to face things, the more likely that stone can become a pearl. Unfortunately, for a lot of situations, pain is inevitable. But if we do learn to face it, we tend to surprise ourselves of how much we're able to endure. And we are not under any pressure to heal right away. Oh, Sometimes it takes time and it's okay to go through that entire process. If you are still on the road, please tune in to Eagle FM 95.5. You can also catch the latest updates on our social media channels. I am Gianna Liades. And I am Nina Richie Alago Flores. This is Matana Aguila International, trusted, connected on point.